Good evening, everyone. Let me please start off by saying uh, it's a real joy that all of you are attending tonight in order to learn about the uh, Master of Data Science and Entrepreneurship at Jats in the small but beautiful town of Den Bosch. Um, before we actually start with the content and I introduce myself, let me please make you aware of our rules for today's uh, meeting. Please have your camera turned off for the, the duration of, of this event and also keep your microphone muted. The session is recorded as you already saw in the invitation and during the Q&A at the end of each of the, the speakers talk and at the end of the overall session, uh, please feel free to, to raise your hand and then the host will unmute you or just put your questions into the chat. So, um, my name is Lucas. I am uh, a student myself of the master program, currently in the second year and working on my thesis. Um, I, I really enjoy studying at Juts, so um, please excuse me if I'm a bit overexcited at some points. Um, for the program for tonight, we're uh, planning three uh, separate uh, sessions, basically. First of all, Werner will uh, give you a general introduction into the curriculum and about into the philosophy behind the master program. Afterwards, Kuhn, one of our former uh, fellow students, will uh, tell you a bit about his experience graduating and uh, completing the master program and also how he can uh, benefit from the things he has learned during his work at Bering Point. Finally, we still have a look at the career perspective days, which are a central part of JETS. After all, what JETS, how JETS is special is in, in one part, at least the big intersection between industry and academia. Here we see that uh, with the data science days, we, we have a great example of this integration and you get really close with companies and uh, hopefully even get your, your first job signed uh, before graduating. On a more personal level, there are three things I really care about when it comes to this master program. First is the interdisciplinarity of it. Uh, we have courses from many different domains that always spark different trains of thought and keep you up on your toes and also let you develop in many areas. The second part is the community. Jets is a very close campus, uh, a very small campus, unfortunately closed currently, but still there is a very strong community. One could almost say that it's like a family you will get to know everyone at JADS quite quickly, whether it's fellow students or staff from the university or just a talk with your lecturers over lunch in the canteen. The final part I really care about at JADS is its end-to-end -end philosophy. It's not just about solving a technical challenge when it comes to data science, but it's about solving a problem. So, from understanding a problem with all its implications and the implications for its implementation up until delivering actual value, you will be on a great, you will receive a great basis uh, with this master program. And uh, in this sense, I would like to give the, uh, the word to Werner, who will, um, now tell you more about the details of the program. Yeah, so thanks a lot, Lucas. Uh, am I audible? Yes, perfect. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, so also welcome from my side to you all. Uh, great that so many of you showed up. Uh, I know these are heavy times, so with a lot of work behind the screen, a lot of studying behind the screen, and um, that's no different uh, for me. So uh, great to see you here. Uh, in this early evening, still behind the screen watching this uh, online event. Um, 
unfortunately, we had no other choice because yeah, I would have loved to welcome you, for example, on our beautiful Marienburg campus at uh, Den Bosch. So you also see here on slides and you might have noticed. So in, in, in my background, you also see the beautiful chapel of the old monastery in which Jazz is located. So in, in better times, weather wise, uh, as you can see, um, but uh, but still so. In spring and summer, it's really beautiful. So basically, I'm sitting in the garden right now uh, with the chapel of the monastery uh, in the back. Okay, up onto the contents. Um, so I'll, I'll be telling you much more about what JEDS is, what uh, the master data science and entrepreneurship in particular is. Um, I'll share some examples of courses and projects uh, that uh, might give you a good idea of what the curriculum looks like. Uh, and I can tell you somewhat more about uh, the admission requirements. We do cool stuff that matters with data. Um, so this basically sums it up. Uh, we definitely do cool stuff, um, but we also want uh, to make uh, impact. So it should matter. Um, and data is always at the core. So we try, always try to create new value with data um, um, so that we have impact. Um, this is me, so um, I won't bother you too much. Um, with info about me, but uh, just so you know, I'm an assistant professor of entrepreneurship uh, since a couple of years, uh, affiliated to JADS. Um, and essentially that means that I do research at the intersection of data science and entrepreneurship. And I teach about data science and entrepreneurship. So to start with the former, um, I'm generally interested in how we can channel entrepreneurial talent in society to the most productive forms of entrepreneurial activity. And there I take a broader view. So I not only focus on startup entrepreneurship, so entrepreneurship for own risk and reward, uh, but I also feel like that there's a lot of what I would call hidden entrepreneurship uh, taking place uh, within larger established firms. Um, so I take this broad notion of entrepreneurship and that not only includes startup entrepreneurship, but also corporate entrepreneurship or um, intrapreneurship. And in my research, I try to understand um, data or AI or tech driven entrepreneurship in particular. Uh, but sometimes um, I do not just focus on data driven entrepreneurship per se, uh, but uh, all kinds of entrepreneurship. But then I apply uh, modern data science methods and techniques to tackle conventional entrepreneurship research questions in better ways. So that's where the disciplines of data science and entrepreneurship come together, um, if you ask me. Well, I'm a coordinator of Data Entrepreneurship in Action 3, uh, which is uh, a compulsory course in the second year of the master's program, uh, which I will come back to uh, later this, uh, this presentation. Um, some of you might actually know me as a co course coordinator of startups, which is a part of the third year of the joint bachelor data science, joint as in that it's um, uh, for students both affiliated to Tilburg University and the Eindhoven University of Technology. And um, I tend to supervise quite a lot of bachelor's and master's thesis on a yearly basis. So again, what I'll discuss is JADS in general, the master's program in particular. Uh, I'll share some examples of courses and projects, the admission requirements, and there's also some room for Q&A. So please do not hesitate uh, to ask questions. Should you have any questions, uh, please do so in the chat, and I'm happy to answer them right after. So something about Jad, uh, on the right hand side, uh, you might have recognized her. So that's uh, Majesty Queen Maxima, who opened Jad's actually uh, a little over four years ago. So that's uh, not too long ago. Uh, so here you can see that we also, that we're also a really young organization, so to say. And we are uh, a collaboration between two mother universities, the Eindhoven University of Technology, the Tilburg University. And here you can ac actually already see uh, the interdisciplinarity coming back, uh, what Lucas was uh, telling you about, uh, because we're basically bringing together uh, people with a social sciences background and a technical sciences background. Well, it's not as black and white as you would expect, because you also have an entrepreneurship group in Eindhoven. You also have cognitive science and AI people in Tilburg. Nonetheless, this is brought together uh, in Den Bosch so that we also have university level education uh, in uh, the um, uh, most important city of the province of North Brabant, so that we have, uh, geographically speaking, 
um, a triangle, so to say, in which this all happens. So what more about JAT? Uh, so we're located at this beautiful Marienburg campus in Sartogenbosch. So that's really close to the city center. Uh, you can become part of a unique community of like-minded data entrepreneurs. So we grow the data entrepreneurs of tomorrow, uh, I tend to say. We actually have on-campus housing available. So um, you could actually live in the city of Sartogenbosch if you'd like. Um, and that would also mean that you're actually living on the edge of the old city center of Sartre. So if you walk out this garden in the back of me, um, it's just a couple of hundreds of meters, hundreds of meters uh, to, the, to the cafes um, in the boss. Um, it's also a five minute walk from Central Station. So that's to, towards the other side. Uh, so it's also a perfectly fine if you currently live in Eindhoven or Tilburg or its regions um, um, to stay there and study in the boss. Some facts and figures. Um, at JADS, education, research, and business come together uh, on our beautiful Marienburg campus. Uh, we currently have 165 master students, of which 27 are international students. We have six applied research labs. We have over 100 professional education participants and over 300 collaborations with companies. Uh, so as you can see, um, many companies, smaller ones, medium-sized ones, larger ones, um, are actually very much willing to collaborate with us um, on all levels um, because AI and data science is booming. Professional education, by the way, uh, that's for um, workers um, and, and they actually do some additional schooling part-time. Uh, so, uh, for example, um, civil servants working at public institutions uh, take so-called data expert program um, with us. So let me tell you a bit more about the positioning of our masters. So I've already been telling you more about um, our two mother universities, Dublin University and the Eindhoven uh, University of Technology. Uh, it could well be that you're currently following the Bachelor of Data Science uh, there, um, which is also a joint bachelor, uh, and that you consider to take uh, some of these masters here on slide. So that's, for example, the Data Science and Engineering Master or the Data Science and AI Master, which will start for the first time as of September this year or in Tilburg, the Data Science and Society Master, Business Analytics and Operations Research, um, or Marketing analy Analytics. And we actually position ourselves right in the middle. So we feel like um, these two disciplines, data science and entrepreneurship, can't without each other, essentially. Um, if you um, are well-equipped with data science knowledge um, or a related discipline uh, from your bachelor's, um, it's about time to know how you can actually create new value with it. And even though the title of the master's program suggests uh, that we are educating future startup entrepreneurs, as I told you, we take a broader notion than that. And we actually see also a part of our students being interested in uh, having a paid job and um, being corporate entrepreneurs. So just having an entrepreneurial mindset as an employee with a paid job. Here are some core features. Um, it's definitely challenging um, because it's interdisciplinary um, and that not, not only holds for the master's program as a whole, but also within courses. Uh, you always um, apply state-of-the-art scientific knowledge to real-life company cases. We have quite a lot of uh, challenge-based learning. So we see that coming back, for example, in day one, two, and three courses, as well as in some of the electives. DEA, by the way, stands for Data Entrepreneurship in Action. So that's an entire series, which is like a common threat uh, through the two-year program. Uh, you can have your own company experience, for example, through our MKB Data Lab or SME Data Lab, um, in which students are being linked to SMEs, so small and medium-sized companies um, willing to invest some of their financial resources into data science knowledge. And in the day of three course, again, we'll come back to that because I'm the coordinator of that course. Um, and so far we have actually seen that 21 startups have been or are being founded by students and further supported by our very own incubator, uh, which is the JETS Playground. So we also have extracurricular activities being organized by our incubator, the JETS Playground. 
Uh, so um, have you always been interested in starting your own firm? Um, then yeah, you're perfectly encouraged, facilitated and supported throughout the entire program. Then regarding the master thesis product projects, these are also multidisciplinary and we always tend to balance scientific contribution on the one hand, of course, we're talking about an academic level master's program and business and society impact uh, on the other hand. Well, we've also seen this resulting in scientific publications actually. Uh, so that is also a sign of the quality of our students, I have to say. And we actually have 65 supervisors from different faculties. So that's not only uh, scientific staff from JADS itself, but also coming from our mother universities. This is essentially the philosophy of the program. So we actually have four core topics, you could say. And it ranges from, on the left-hand side, data engineering to data-driven business development via data analytics and data-driven decision-making. And under each of these four pillars, you could say, uh, we have a couple of courses always. Also important here is to highlight, uh, let's say, the, the yellow or golden arrow down below which uh, emphasizes the societal and business context. So next to data engineering, data analytics, data-driven decision-making and data-driven business development courses. We also have courses covering things like intellectual property, law, ethics. And essentially uh, what you'll, um, we'll be educating you uh, in is how to turn data into value, which may also be societal value. So hence the heart symbol. Well, a lot of information on this slide, so I'm not going to take you through all of this exactly in, in much detail, uh, but a few takeaways here. So again, what you can see is that um, quite some courses are listed underneath each of these four core pillars. Um, but here you can also see the interdisciplinarity within courses. So that's to be seen from the multiple color, colors within courses. So just to give you an example, because that one stands out, entrepreneurial finance on the lower right corner um, also has a slight touch of the societal and business context. But that also includes some theory on law, for example, uh, company law. Um, you also see quite some courses with dashed lines, by the way. Uh, those are electives. So it's not as if you have to follow all of these courses, but you can also select just a few of these electives uh, in some of the semesters. This is what the curriculum uh, as of next year will look like. So starting this September, um, and actually every column basically stands for a semester. So semester 1.1, 1.2, 2.1 and 2.2. Um, what I like to highlight here is that, as you can see in the second year, there's also room for electives coming from one out of two minors focusing on either agro-food or crime safety and security. Throughout the entire second year, we also have the master's thesis project planned um, and throughout the entire curriculum, so throughout the entire two years, as you can see, we also offer uh, an entire skills journey, as we call it, and coaching, coaching whenever needed. So that's not just um, study coaching, um, but um, also coaching if you need, for example, help with setting up your own startup. This is the planned curriculum for the year after. So uh, in case you would start then, um, uh, it, it looks like, like this. And you might have noticed that not much has changed. The only thing here is that we also plan to add two more minors in health and vitality, as well as the data science research minor basically preparing you for a PhD afterwards. Then something more about the master's thesis. Um, I already told you um, that it's uh, supposed to have business and or societal impact. Um, but of course, it's also always related to data. And these data sets could come from the following sources or a combination thereof. The vast majority actually uses a data set from an external company or organization. Uh, but what we also sometimes see happening is that students collect or scrape their own data. Um, that the data comes from the student's own company, which would be a route via the JETS playground. 
Um, and sometimes actually, uh, for example, myself uh, also share a certain data set that I, that I collected um, with which you can work. That's so cool. that would be a jazz affiliated research project. It's always about balancing scientific contribution and practical relevance. Practical relevance, of course, but again, we also have uh, an academic level master's program, of course. So uh, it should also contribute to the existing literature in one way or another. And something more about these data entrepreneurship in action courses, one, two, and three, or DEA abbreviated. Um, these are all experience-based or challenge-based learning courses. And in day one and two, we see that um, collaborating partners of JADS uh, share data sets, and it's kind of a data challenge. So it's up to you as a student to work with those data sets and create new value out of them. The crucial difference here is that uh, within day one, uh, you're actually creating value for these companies as if you're employed there, whereas within day two, you're much more like a consultant consulting these firms. In day three, um, you're actually going through the first few phases of your own startup. So you're asked to form a team, to generate IDs, to pick the most promising one, and to validate this particular ID uh, on market potential to a certain extent. And actually, the real entrepreneurial journey only starts once the course has ended. So should you be interested in taking your startup a step further beyond the boundaries of this course, um, you'll, you'll actually have to do so once the course has ended. And uh, we see that happen. And then um, that's where the Jets Playground uh, comes in because um, uh, the Jets Playground will, will help you with all kinds of extracurricular activities to make it work. There's also a corporate innovation track within the Day 3 course. Uh, this means that some companies are actually um, um, involved in the course. Um, in case you're pursuing a business ID in their direction, so that they might actually uh, serve as, let's say, the launching customer or lead client of the startup. So it's a form of corporate startup collaboration that we try to organize here. Well, together with the thesis, this all results in over nine months of relevant work experience after the graduation. This is a good example of um, a very specific uh, project that took place within the DA2 course. So uh, Project Heritage, Certo and Bos, which is essentially a digital history tool guide of Certo and Bos. Um, should you be interested, please have a look at the website because it's very cool what our students have uh, created um, during one of the editions of the DA2 course. Um, it, for example, um, shows dynamic suggestions based on open data sources. Um, and it's essentially a personalized tour based on a certain profile that you have as a use of this app. Then something more about the MKB Data Lab. I've also been uh, telling you about the MKB, MKB Data Lab before, um, but that's again, um, a, a way of linking our students to SMEs SMEs tend to have only relatively little resources to hire their own data science talent, but still they do have data and they want to do something meaningful with it. Um, and that's actually uh, where the MKB Data Lab comes in. And this is a very specific example of one freelancing student uh, helped an SME company with creating a financial dashboard. The Jets Playground. Um, its aim is to support student entrepreneurs within JADS to build their data science-based businesses. Um, and um, we actually have, or we strive for a tailor-made approach with respect to students' entrepreneurial intent, meaning that not all of you uh, who enter the master's program are actually interested in starting their own firm, um, as you can see from this diagram as well. Um, so for example, the green slice, which is a relatively small slice, but still, um, these are students saying, I'm interested in entrepreneurship or corporate venture or corporate entrepreneurship. So um, these are students planning to work for a larger firm and not setting up their own. Some others um, are interested in it, but still don't know where to start. They don't have an idea yet. Uh, some do have, some also already have a firm themselves uh, before entering the master's program. 
whatever your current status, uh, we can always uh, help you with whatever is needed at that certain phase um, of your entrepreneurial intent, so to say. This is a list of where our graduates are currently working. And um, as you can see, quite some are actually working for established firms. Um, so um, it's fun to see. It's not an exhaustive list uh, because uh, we also have, for example, a few students, uh, previous students, alumni of us, um, uh, working for Bluetick. So that's their uh, very successful uh, startup company. Um, but as you can see, you can also easily end up in a larger firm. And something more about the eligibility. Um, to be considered for this master's program, you'll need to have a minimum of 10 ECTS in mathematics, as well as in statistics. And you also have to have taken courses and completed courses in computer science or data science, databases, algorithms, programming, machine learning, data mining. Um, yeah. If you are in doubt, then just do not hesitate to contact our colleagues uh, via, for example, questions at jads.nl. Um, and they would be happy to help you with checking whether you're actually eligible with your current uh, bachelor's studies uh, to, to enter the master's program. Um, but as a rule of thumb, um, you have uh, the rules on slide. Uh, so uh, if you can show that you actually have uh, this prerequisite knowledge, so to say, uh, then you're allowed to enter. More specifically, if you have done a bachelor in industrial engineering or innovation sciences, um, you're actually allowed to do the following coherent package, uh, which is called data science for IE and IS. Um, here you see a list of um, courses that you could then take as a pre-master's program, um, after which you're again eligible to enter the master's program. Finally, um, this has been set by the Harvard Business Review, data scientist, the sexiest job of the 21st century. This can also be seen from the following report. Um, this is the Future of Jobs report um, published in October 2020, so very recently. So that's the cover page, as well as the two pages of the country profile of the Netherlands. And it's very small, I know. Um, so um, here I zoomed in a bit, might still be a bit small, but believe me, what it says is um, that a vast majority of the companies um, have adopted certain technologies with which you need, for which you need data science uh, knowledge and skills. That can also be seen from the emerging and redundant job roles, actually, because on top you see, for example, data analysts and scientists, AI and machine learning specialists, and big data specialists. Um, and the fun thing is data entry clerks, for example, is the number one redundant job role uh, in the nearby future. And from the emerging skills on the right, uh, you could actually see that our master's program is well positioned because uh, it's not, alone, not only about technology design and programming, for example, but it's also about analytical skills, innovation, creativity. And that's exactly uh, uh, what we're doing. So we're exactly bringing those um, uh, skills together in our master's program, data science and entrepreneurship. So as a summary, I might have taken too much of your time already. I'm sorry for that, if that's the case. Um, but just quickly then, um, at JADS, we combine technical and entrepreneurial knowledge and skills. And I'd like to stress once more here that it's not um, such entrepreneurial knowledge and skills is not only needed for you to set up your own firm, but you can also easily um, apply those skills within firms. Um, there are some striking similarities between how Established firms create new value as compared to how startups do that. Um, almost all courses involve data science techniques. So even though uh, even uh, those that focus on entrepreneurship um, or business development, we combine evidence-based learning with experiential le learning. Uh, so you could say that um, practical data science applications are based on state-of-the-art scientific insights. So theory and practice uh, reinforce each other. We give students the real life experience of starting their own data-driven venture uh, through uh, the Data 3 course and or the MKB Data Lab. And that's again, also relevant when working in large corporates. And a uh, very practical note still, um, you have the possibility of applying via two universities 
namely the Eindhoven University of Technology and Tilburg University. Well, some um, small difference, uh, differences might apply. Uh, please uh, check this yourselves. Um, again, if in doubt whether you're eligible to enter the master's program, do not hesitate to contact us. That brings me to the Q&A session. I think there is still some time left uh, for questions. Um, if you'd like to know more uh, from my side, uh, and I would be happy to answer your questions. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Werner. Uh, you, you actually did quite well with the time. So okay. um, yeah, there's definitely enough time for some Q&A. Please feel free to raise your hand or uh, post your questions in the chat. Okay, we have the first one. In the data entrepreneurship in action slide, talent program of uh, Tilburg University was mentioned in, in DEA. Could you please give more information about that program? Yeah, sure I can. Um, but to be honest, I don't know exactly what the program entails, but what I do know is that um, you also have uh, a top athlete program, for example, uh, so you can easily compare it with that. Um, so in case you're a top athlete, uh, you can still combine uh, being a top athlete with uh, your studies. Um, and if you meet the criteria of being an ambitious top entrepreneur, so to say, um, you can also uh, make use of, for example, extra opportunities uh, to, to, to pass a course, or uh, you could um, be allowed to have some extension of deadlines, uh, those kinds of things. So all um, directed towards um, making the combination of entrepreneurship and following and completing your studies in a successful way possible. I hope that answers your question. We have another question. Um, it's regarding the exchange. Uh, if you decide to go on an exchange for half a year, uh, will this delay the studies? Um, or can, uh, be because the courses are given on a, on a yearly basis or how will it work out? Uh, that's actually a very good question. Uh, I think I have to pass on this question because I don't know myself. Uh, I do know that there are possibilities to go on exchange. Um, and uh, we do have quite some partner universities via our mother universities with which you could go on exchange, um, but I'm not sure whether it means you'll have a delay. Maybe you know, Lucas. Um, I, I do know that uh, you will definitely have a delay, um, but I'm not exactly sure about whether it's a full year or just half a year. I think from the people who did a... Uh, an exchange that uh, they had half a year of delay. Um, but then there's also always some changes in the program. Um, so I don't know how that relates. And uh, maybe you, you need to pull ahead one of the second year courses, for example, already in the, the, into the first year or the, the other way around. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I do know that there is a lot of flexibility um, in that respect, right? Absolutely. Yeah, we're, we're quite small. Um, you will definitely hear the name Nigel uh, a few times once you, you start studying here. He's our, um, our study advisor. And together with him, it will always be possible to find a solution in order to adapt uh, to these circumstances. Then the next question. Is this master also suitable for students who are not aiming at starting their own business, but just work for an already existing company? Definitely, yes. So um, if this um, uh, hasn't come across clearly enough, uh, I'd like to stress this once more. Um, we know that uh, the word entrepreneurship in the master's program's title uh, might suggest otherwise, but it's not. So we take this broad notion of entrepreneurship, meaning that you can um, also end up within an established firm, um, but then uh, you basically exploit the entrepreneurial competences and skills that we educate you in 
within that firm. And as I told you before, there are some striking similarities between how large companies nowadays uh, try to create new value um, as compared to how new firms do that. Maybe before I go forward to the next question, let me add to, to this one sentence. Um, learning the, the entrepreneurial process through the DAIA courses definitely teached me to uh, structurally analyze problems and find solutions. And um, this is something you will find in, in any business where, where problem owners come to you and say, we want to have a, a database solution for this. And it will be your job to really understand the essence of the problem and develop a solution. So, uh, yeah, it, it definitely helps also in an employed environment. Also, I heard that we have someone who raised their hand. Um, yes, that was me. Uh, I raised yes. my hand because I want to clarify with, uh, with the speaker uh, about uh, the, uh, the DEI courses, like there's one, two, three, and also there was innovation uh, that students are allowed to follow. Is that part of an extracurriculum activities or is that part of, uh, 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 of an internship, of the internship, the nine months that you study? Uh, none of both. So uh, thanks for your question, first of all. Um, so the DEIA series, so the abbreviation D-E-I-A stands for Data Entrepreneurship in Action, again. So, um, uh, so at the core of our master's program is data entrepreneurship, and the inaction suggests that you're actually um, uh, making, that you're making your data science knowledge and skills work. So you're actually creating new value with your data science knowledge and skills for uh, established companies in uh, case of DEA 1 and 2, and for your own company in DEA 3. And uh, those three courses are a series, uh, also uh, positioned in the master's program um, uh, sequentially. So in the first semester, the second semester, and the third semester, so the first semester of the second year, you could say. Um, and they actually form the very core of what we as JAD stand for, so to say. So it's not extracurricula, it's not um, part of an internship, it's a compulsory part of the master's program. Um, and actually, these are courses uh, that bring together the data science knowledge and skills gained in other courses and um, you applying it there in those particular courses. Yeah, it's clear, thank you. Okay, welcome. I will ask one final question, um, namely, uh, could you give some extra information about the JATS playground? What are the benefits for the students and what is in it for JATS? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so the JATS playground, again, is our very own incubator. And if you don't know the term incubator, it's essentially an organization um, which supports early stage startups. Um, and um, yeah, so you also have accelerators, but that usually uh, comes after. Uh, once you already gain some traction with your startup, you can enter accelerator programs. Before that, you have incubators, and the Jets Playground is um, directed by um, um, our colleague Yoni Oostveen, and he's organizing all kinds of relevant, relevant events, uh, for example. There's an entire network of collaborating partners of JADS um, that could be uh, interested to get in contact with. We have pitch competitions, uh, those kinds of events. Um, there is, um, yeah, so you might still uh, recognize from slides um, uh, the logos from Rockstart, the Brabants Ontwikkelingsmaatschappij, so that's a regional development um, association, um, Braventure. Uh, what have you. So there are so many um, funds and companies, uh, institutions willing to support and encourage entrepreneurship in the Brabant entrepreneurial ecosystem that are all connected to the Jazz Playground. So if you're interested in starting up your own firm while studying, then the Jazz Playground can help. So my colleague Yoni is always willing to, to have a talk with you 
and um, it's it's basically extracurricular support um, to for you to be able to combine student entrepreneurship with studying successfully in the best possible way. So that's that's in it for you, and it's completely voluntarily. Um, but should you be interested in startup entrepreneurship, then uh, this this can be of great benefit to you. What's in it for Jads? Um, nothing particular, uh, other than that um, we hope to bring forth uh, many successful startups, which also yeah, well increases our legitimacy, you could say. All right, thank you for this, Werner. Uh, You're welcome. And, and thank you for your, your overall talk. Uh, there's one or two, two small things I might want to add for the um, Jad's Playground. On the 20th of April, we have another event. And uh, during that event, we will have also a stronger focus on the Jad's Playground. So if you still have um, questions regarding this, um, then, then please feel free to, to join the other event as well. And um, further, maybe as a, a little uh, joke also, uh, Juds offers also space for uh, for startups, which is is really great because like if you you walk through Juds and uh, you, you can just drop by the offices of your your fellow students and it really creates an uh, an uplifting atmosphere and you uh, can can get into touch with them. You, they often also hire than other students in order for like part time jobs. Uh, uh, next to your studies and, and you're part of this uh, startup journey. Um, this is something that maybe you could say Judd's also gains from it, really that, that this atmosphere and uh, is, is on site and stays within the community. Um, yeah, so perfect, uh, Lucas. Uh, um, very helpful to add to, to that. I basically forgot uh, the, the having office space um, addition. Uh, so thanks. Um, one final word from my side, if I'm allowed. Uh, sure. Should you still have any questions? So now, or once you have processed all this um, after the session ended, do not hesitate to contact me uh, in whatever way. So uh, most easily would be via LinkedIn. Uh, do not hesitate to connect and uh, ask any question that you still might have. And I would still be happy to answer um, them that way. And I would love to see you once uh, on our beautiful campus in real life. So uh, yeah, make a wise decision. Thank you, Werner. Well, with this now, we're a few minutes past schedule, but I think uh, it's, it's all still good. Uh, we're very nice, interesting questions. Uh, a good discussion, I would suppose. Werner gave us a good insight into what studying at uh, JADS means in terms of its content of what you learn and uh, how you learn it. Um, next up with Kuhn, we maybe have a bit more of a focus on the, the community and we will experience how uh, life as a student is at, at JADS, but also how the knowledge we gain throughout the master can be applied in practice and can actually help you uh, succeed in your job. So Kuhn, please go ahead. Yes, thank you, Lucas, for uh, for inviting me, and uh, Jess, thank you for having me. Uh, hi, everybody at home. Um, I'm uh, Koen Graat. I'm uh, working at the Bearing Point. Right now, I'm not at the office, as you might see. This is the the view of the office um, where I would normally work at, but uh, the last uh, few months, uh, or actually last half year, it uh, it has been from home. Uh, I graduated uh, last summer from JETS uh, and I'm now working as a management analyst at Bearing Point. And I'm uh, more than happy to, uh, to tell you something about uh, life after JETS uh, and what I'm currently doing at, uh, at Bearing Point. So I'm first going to tell you a little bit more about what Bearing Point is doing. Uh, Bearing Point is a European uh, business consultancy um, so generally you would say there are four types of consultancy. 
uh, strategy consulting, business consultancy, IT services, and second man. Uh, Bearing Point uh, is focusing on business consultancy. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's mainly about uh, yeah, really achieving results with, uh, with the customers um, and starting a project uh, more on, a, uh, on an analytical view and also ending uh, a, a project really by implementing uh, the stuff that you have brought up. Um, yeah, we are mainly in the Netherlands active in, in four markets. Uh, so those are the retail and the consumer products, the utilities, the financial sector, and also the public sector. And within the Netherlands, uh, we have one office in Amsterdam and we have uh, four departments. Those are customer and growth. They are really focusing on uh, the customer side and uh, the growth side of the company. Uh, we have people and strategy uh, department and they are uh, focusing on uh, the, the people within the company and also uh, more the long-term strategy of the company. And I'm uh, working in the technology and data analytics uh, part of, uh, of Bearing Point. Uh, and technology is mainly about uh, advising customers uh, on which uh, uh, solution they, uh, they should choose for their, uh, for their IT. And data and analytics is mainly about yeah, achieving uh, business results uh, with, uh, with data. So as you can see, we are uh, active in different industries and also uh, uh, with different focuses. So often you see that uh, a customer and growth project also uh, uh, is ending up in a technology or data analytics uh, project. Um, so we are doing, uh, going from strategy to also the real implementation. Um, and yeah, we have a, a strong knowledge network and we are uh, based across whole Europe. So this is the bearing point world map. And as you can see here on the top right, we have quite a lot of offices uh, in Europe, um, but we also have a, a global reach uh, with our partners. Um, so this means that we, uh, we are active basically uh, around the world, um, but we have a strong focus uh, uh, in Europe. So now I'm going to tell you a little bit more about, about myself and what I did before I started at Bearing Point. So uh, I started with a, a bachelor ICT and business in, in Eindhoven. Uh, and what I mainly learned there is combining uh, and being the bridge between ICT and business. Uh, during my studies, I uh, also founded my own company. Uh, I, I worked as a freelancer. Uh, where I did, uh, yeah, I started with giving Excel courses to uh, to uh, businesses, uh, which uh, later ended up in uh, do, yeah, helping companies with their uh, Excel day-to-day uh, -day struggles. Uh, and in the end, I also did some more data consultancy. So uh, maybe building some dashboards or helping uh, smaller companies with their uh, data strategy. Uh, well, I was, yeah, freelancing, I, I had to choose, okay, after my bachelor, am I going to work or am I going to do a master? Uh, and just, I think one year before I had to choose uh, the, the data science and entrepreneurship master started. Um, and why I chose this master is because I was also already doing some entrepreneurial things. And I was also busy uh, with visualizing data, uh, doing data strategy, uh, all the data projects. Uh, so that was what brought me to the to JETS. And what I really liked about being a student at JETS is that it's a small community. Uh, yeah, you learn a lot. They have a, a different focus from more tech side to the entrepreneurial side. Uh, and while I was uh, at JETS, I also uh, joined the MKB Data Lab as a freelancer. So I think I did four different projects over there. Um, it's a really uh, fun experience to do uh, actual real data projects with uh, smaller companies. Uh, I learned uh, a lot uh, during that time. Um, and two years ago, I already I uh, went uh, to uh, Sweden for three months. 
So I was still doing my master. I was going to my second year and I worked uh, in, in Sweden uh, at Tetra Pak as a, as a data scientist where I helped Tetra Pak uh, to uh, yeah, get a more, a better pricing strategy uh, based on data. And uh, in my last year, I also did a part-time board year uh, at the study association that we have at JETS, which is called Pattern. Um, I also yeah, learned quite a lot uh, during that year. Uh, so that's also where I uh, also did some uh, acquisition for the, uh, for the study association. So that's where I already got in touch with uh, quite some companies. So currently I'm working uh, at Bearing Point and uh, before I'm going to tell you more about this, it's good to know that I'm right now more focusing on the data engineering side of uh, data science, uh, where I see that a lot of fellow students are more working uh, at the, yeah, more working in the data science. So I started in September, uh, 2020 at Bearing Point. So I've been, working for almost, almost seven months right now. Uh, and I started with a, 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 a small project, a proof of concept at a grid operator. And here we had to uh, prove to this grid operator what are the benefits of a graph that database compared to their uh, old solution. Um, after that, I did a, a, a knowledge portal a project at the Knowledge Institute so there we were building uh, basically from scratch on uh, an, a knowledge portal, a website, uh, which uh, yeah, their clients could visit to ask questions, but also uh, search for knowledge that they need. And uh, it, this is a smaller project. It was uh, only a few weeks. I also did the roadmap 2020 for the knowledge portal together with the customers. Uh, and here on the bottom of the slide, you see most of the technologies I'm, uh, I'm using uh, right now uh, at my job. Uh, so this is uh, the graph database vendor that we uh, use for the project. Uh, I'm working quite a lot on uh, Microsoft uh, Azure. Um, I'm working with Kubernetes and Docker to, uh, yeah, actually to push data from, uh, from uh, A to B. Um, and I'm uh, yeah, building the website with uh, JavaScript React. This is something I, I didn't learn yet uh, at JET. So this was really uh, learning on the job, but it was uh, a lot of fun. Uh, and as a consultant, it's uh, important to uh, present your results and uh, the things you did. So I'm still using uh, a lot of uh, PowerPoint and uh, IOBIA is a, is a tool uh, where you can, uh, yeah, together with the team, uh, work on a, on a roadmap. Uh, it's really interactive and a visual way of working together. So this is the slide that uh, Werner, the, the previous speaker, also showed uh, to you. I thought it would be interesting to see which courses I'm, uh, I'm still uh, using uh, in my job. So as you can see, I'm, I'm really focusing on the data engineering side. Um, but also quite, uh, quite a lot on the entrepreneurship uh, side. So um, I'm really working a lot with data structures. The, the, the graph database uh, is uh, one example. Uh, this is something that we had in the data engineering and uh, advanced data architecture courses. Um, but also Werner told a lot about it is the data and entrepreneurship in action courses. Here you work together with, uh, with the company on the on the real uh, a real problem or a real challenge they are facing, and and I still uh, yeah see a lot of uh, these things I learned there in my daily job, and not forgetting to mention is the yeah more the, the IP privacy law and ethics uh, side of uh, of the masters, yeah GDPR is a really uh, hot topic still nowadays, and we're working with data. Uh, so we really have to comply to uh, to the law that uh, are active in Europe, um, and also uh, yeah, you're you're facing a lot of ethical issues. Uh, what do you want to do with data? What do you not want to do with data? So these are the courses. Of course, I'm also doing some data analytics, but th those are the courses I'm mainly using right now. Um, so. 
if you are wondering what, what I'm actually doing, I often advise people to go to a website of a company, uh, look out uh, yeah, for their job offerings, uh, and there you see which technologies they are using, uh, what, what kind of skills they are asking for. So if you're looking for a master, I would really advise you to, to go and look out for positions to see what a data scientist or a data engineer actually is doing. So this was my, uh, my last slide, and I'm uh, more than happy to answer your questions that you might have. Thank you, Kuhn. Uh, it was a nice presentation. Um, let's see. I think there is still one uh, question from the previous round that wasn't answered yet, and it was on the workload. Um, so what would you say, what was the workload uh, you faced during the master program? Was it, it was about the workload or the contact hours. I, I also saw something about the contact hours. But um, maybe go for both. Yeah, I would say like the workload is really depending on uh, what you're doing next to your to your study. What I saw is that a lot of people are uh, entrepreneurial, they're doing uh, a lot of things next to their studies, either working or having their own start startup. Uh, Jets is really supporting that. Um, so for those people, the workload is very high. Also during my last year, I did a, a part-time board year. Um, but like in particular courses, I would say that it's around 40 hours uh, a week, maybe a little bit uh, above. Uh, and of course, uh, yeah, at the end of the semester, there's always uh, yeah, some more pressure uh, and some more hours. And the contact hours, I would say between 50 and 20 hours a week that you really uh, have, uh, have classes. Uh, and outside of that, you have quite a lot of group work. Um, I think that's also uh, in JETS. Yeah. Yes, indeed. I think um, there, there's a few things also to it. Uh, first of all, the first semester, at least from my experience, was the hardest one. Uh, so there, there you had the highest workload load. And uh, then in the subsequent ones, you, you had a bit more time for side projects also. Um, but indeed, yeah, I think you summarized it quite well. We have someone who raised their hand. Uh, please uh, go ahead and uh, ask the questions. I unfortunately cannot see where. Uh... Okay. Um, well, otherwise, um, I can uh, can go ahead and say, uh, Kun, can you maybe tell a bit about your your student life, uh, what it was like at Chats? Uh, how how did you experience it? Yeah. So, yeah, I I started in two thousand seventeen. And uh, I, I did the pre-master before I could do uh, the master. Um, and I was quite active since the beginning uh, at JETS. Um, so uh, we, before Corona, we had a, a weekly drink uh, at JETS. Um, I was mainly uh, organizing the, that together with a group of students. Um, I've, uh, I've, yeah, been active in the MKB data lab uh, with some projects. Um, and what I really like about JETS and what I think is that it's unique is that it's a small community. There are about 150 master students. Uh, at a certain point in time, I, I knew everybody. Um, and yeah, there are so many people who are uh, starting their own company or have, the, have a good idea. And it was really, fun to to talk to this uh, people that that was were doing a startup or uh, having a great idea um, so that's yeah that's the thing i really liked uh, there there's a lot of entrepreneurial spirit within jets with the students yeah yes indeed i think this is something i can only uh, agree with um, it's it's a really unique community uh, we have at jets due to the 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 size I think, and uh, also to, to all the group work you mentioned earlier, uh, 
that you really get to to know your fellow students and uh, be part of a team. Um, so how about uh, your your job? You you told us a lot about your work at Bearing Point, uh, but how did you actually get the job? What is it? Uh, what were were the challenges, or were there actually challenges? Were there too many offers that you couldn't decide? Um, how did you experience that, and how did the the master play into that? You think? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um... I started searching during the summer uh, and I wanted to go for consultancy uh, because you get quite a lot of different projects in a short amount of time uh, at uh, different industries. So I wanted for sure to go for the uh, consultancies, but yeah, since Corona, a lot of consultancies uh, had a, a hiring stop because a lot of uh, projects were canceled. Um, so there were not a lot of jobs in consultancy. So I also uh, looked uh, for some other uh, industries. Um, I got in the end several uh, offers, um, but uh, yeah, and I was really happy that Bearing Point was also uh, offering me a, a consultancy job, but it was not really, yeah, it was quite a hard time to get a job uh, when we were only half a year after Corona. Um, and I think the, the data science and entrepreneurship side is a really good combination, which a lot of uh, companies like, uh, because the entrepreneurial mindset is uh, often really important in uh, companies to, uh, to start something new or yeah, working with new technologies uh, or people that are uh, struck in a way of working, how to get them out of that way of working. Um, so I think it's a perfect combination, and yeah, I'm not. I'm. I didn't start. A, uh, I didn't start a startup, but I'm now working uh, at a consultancy firm, uh, and I think uh, both is fine, and both the master is really good. Uh, yeah. All right. Thank you. Then we still have two questions from the audience. Um, first of all, uh, what does the examination of most courses look like? I.e. Uh, written exams or group assignments and do you mostly work individually or in small groups yeah i, I think in most of the yeah we almost at every course you have a, a, a written exam um, and compared to other masters you are doing uh, quite a lot of uh, group work which is really fun um, because like right now in my job i'm also doing a uh, a lot of uh, group work and not uh, working on an ind individual basis. Um, and yeah, most of the time you're working in with three or four people, I would say. Yes, um, I, I would actually say the opposite in the way that uh, almost all courses, if not all of them have group work. Uh, the day courses, for example, they don't even have an exam. It's it's really about the the, yeah, the group work and writing a report, um, but yeah, indeed, it's it's a very mixed approach, and uh, sometimes you need to reply, write more of a business oriented paper. Uh, sometimes uh, a full fledged academic uh, article, uh, and then again uh, presentations a lot. So uh, there there are various forms of uh, evaluation. Yes. Um, so what are your fellow graduates doing at the moment? Yeah, so I think, uh, especially in data science, is that every company uh, has data. Um, so I would almost say everywhere it's from the government to the banking industry. Um, of course, a lot of uh, People start there or a lot. There are quite some people who start a, their own startup. Um, but yeah, I, I wouldn't say, yeah, almost all industries, consultancy, um, and then mainly as data scientist, data engineer, data analyst, uh, those kind of jobs. All right, thank you. Um, and then in the meantime, we still got a, a final question before we 
move towards the, uh, the third part of this session, uh, namely, uh, how did you ex experience the, the online uh, studies? Maybe uh, for you, it was already towards the end of your program. So I can also add to this, but uh, what is your take on this? Yeah, so I, uh, I didn't have any online courses, so I was doing my master thesis back then, but I can say a little bit more about how it is to work from home um, because I, I think yeah, almost all of my colleagues are, I've never seen uh, in real life, only on a screen. Um, that is indeed very strange, um, but yeah, the times will get better and uh, yeah, everyone is in the same situation. Um, and of course you have some benefits. Uh, I don't have any travel time uh, at the moment. Um, so I don't have to uh, go to the office in, uh, in Amsterdam. Um, and it's, it's easy to switch from meeting to meeting, but I would say most of the things are of course downsides because you would like to get creative and uh, have a chat, also informal chat with your colleagues. And how is it for you, Lucas, having online courses? Yes, um, well, I, in, in, in light, or if I just look at the university, of course, it, def, it, it significantly impacts um, the, the university life and the, the, mainly the fun activities. Um, for the courses itself, I think uh, that actually all the lecturers I have currently, they, they adopted quite well to uh, what, what, how the courses are set up and uh, change the, the forms of evaluation in order to make take home exams and uh, focus more on writing reports rather than have the, the proctored examinations. Uh, we still have some of them, but, uh, but in other courses, they are also replaced by other forms of evaluation. Um, with respect to the group work, I would say that it, um, it, yeah, it, it's okay. Um, I feel that most students have uh, adopted to it, uh, ad adapted to it, and um, it works out in the end of the day. And uh, it's also a, a life skill, I would say, um, but in it's, uh, it's, it's not a big hurdle. Uh, on the, the positive side, uh, having recorded lectures and uh, not coming on campus uh, gives a lot of freedom uh, with respect to uh, working on the site. For example, now with my thesis, um, I'm working, so I can easily also then uh, watch the lecture in the evening. And uh, most professors are very active on the discussion forums within the course pages, so uh, that there is a lot more flexibility for, for the students in uh, scheduling their work uh, or, or their studies around work and, and other circumstances. Um, so on that note, thank you again, Kuhn, uh, for your, your presentation and, and your insights during the Q&A. Um, I think we can now have, uh, we have a video uh, which details the uh, data science days. So please enjoy. We as Data Science Days aim to organize uh, events for data science students uh, to help them um, find their purpose within data science, to help them find a job within data science, um, and to let them discover what they like to be. What makes this collaboration unique is that it is a collaboration of three parties, uh, and it's one st study association, uh, one uh, like company, one education-related organization, and students. So I think it's a really nice uh, combination of different kind of, kinds of people. I think by collaborating, Chats, Pattern, and the Data Science Days can uh, host great career events uh, and speak to a larger public than either one of the parties could do uh, by themselves. So I think by joining as a company, you have a great reach of data science students people studying at JETS, people studying at the TUE, 
people studying at Tilburg University, but also people from outside. Uh, as these events are really large and uh, host all kinds of various different companies in one event, uh, it can be really interesting for all kinds of students who are interested in data science, want to study data science or are studying data science anywhere in the Netherlands. We at JATS think it's important to involve the students in a career event because they are the people uh, we are organizing it for. So students have to be part of the uh, organizing process and I think that's the unique selling point of this collaboration. We are uh, helping in organizing these events as JATS because uh, we have a, a really large ecosystem full of companies and full of contacts uh, who can help uh, who are really the right match for, for students, so um, we can help connect students to, to the right companies and to the right people to make this event really interesting. Data Science Experience Day in 2020 was organized by students and I think that's uh, good for the career events because we as a university don't know what students want to get out of the day and I think students are the best ambassadors of those career events. Why I joined the, the one of the themes of data science days is because it's really fun you come into contact with a lot of different companies and um, yeah it's just a way to to learn how to communicate more in a professional way there's all kinds of companies from different sectors which are all interested in data science and applied data science so as a data science student you have the opportunity to look around and see uh, in which different fields uh, data science is applied and have the opportunity to talk to, to these companies directly. At JETS we stimulate our students to start their own business, to start their own startup and I think it's good that we also uh, have a career event that uh, provides the information for those students that want to do the entrepreneurship thing, that want to do entrepreneurship in data science. So if you, if you are a student or you're a professional and you really uh, looking to find out what a career in data science looks like, you should really join uh, the Data Science Days events uh, because they're really the perfect opportunity to, uh, to learn more about uh, the field and to talk to the right people and to find out what, what your career could look like. All right, great. Good. Um, well, also I, I saw in the chat, Anna, thank you uh, for, for adding this part. Um, this is something uh, I think that didn't really come out in, uh, in, in the session so far. Um, next to the, the interdisciplinarity and the end-to-end the -end, uh, involvement of, of the, the course uh, and the, the master program, uh, we also have a strong uh, skills journey throughout the whole program where we learn about different soft skills, but one part of it is also an individual coaching. So once a semester, if, uh, if you're interested, uh, you will have a, a session with a personal coach where you can uh, discuss things that go beyond your studies, beyond uh, your life. And uh, this also really helps, particularly in times like these, when you can, uh, if, if they advise you for certain approaches to, to handle situations, if you feel you're procrastinating or you feel overwhelmed by, by the workload, not leaving the house, um, there is definitely a lot of opportunities also to uh, talk about this and um, 
in the end grow grow along it rather than uh, just feeling bad about it. Um, yes, are there any other questions at the moment? Please feel free to to go ahead. Otherwise, I would say uh, thank you very much for joining today. It, uh, it was a, a great uh, evening, I think. It was a lot of fun for me, that's for sure. And um, I do hope to see you at the 20th of April and, um, and, and enjoy your night. And um, yeah, keep in mind uh, what, what Judd has to offer. I think uh, from the, the, the deepest part of my heart, I can say it's a, a great program that's definitely uh, worth the two years you will, uh, will spend at this institution. Thank you.